So far, we have been dealing with concentrated or point forces. We depict a concentrated force using an arrow. This arrow represents the magnitude and the direction of the force and we apply the force at a specific point. In real life, forces are not always concentrated and not applied at a point. Consider this bookcase. Here the books on the shelf create a distributed force along the shelf. In many such instances, loads are distributed along the lines or over surfaces or over volumes. We call these forces as distributed forces. Look at this example. Sandbags are placed on the beam creating a distributed load over the beam's entire length. The wind load on the highway signboard acts on the entire surface. Fluid pressure acts on the entire submerged area. Wind loads, water loads, people sitting in a classroom and cars on a bridge are all examples of distributed loads. A distributed force at any point is characterized by its intensity and the direction. So there are two quantities when we deal with the air distribution, a loading curve and the intensity of the force. The intensity of a force acting on a line is defined by force per length unit. This is expressed in Newton per meter in SI system or pounds per foot in the US system. Now the question is, how do we deal with the distributed forces when solving problems? As you can imagine, it is convenient to replace the distributed load with an equivalent concentrated force because we know very well how to handle concentrated forces. Fortunately, this is relatively an easy two-step process. First, to convert the distributed load to an equivalent concentrated load, we determine the total force. The total force is the area under the loading curve. It's easy to find the area when we deal with the uniform distribution like the one shown here. It is a rectangle. Finding the area of a rectangle is something we all know very well. Here the area is defined by multiplying the length of the beam and the intensity of the force. Second, we need to figure out the location where to apply this force. It turns out the force must pass through the centroid of the area under the curve. That's it. Let's look at this example where we have a uniformly distributed load on a 2 meter long beam. The intensity of the force is 200 newtons per meter. The area under the loading curve is the total force and it is equal to 200 times 2 equaling 400 newtons. The centroid of this area is right in the middle of the rectangle, so the force is applied at a distance of 1 meter. Simple, isn't it? Let's solve a few problems and get more practice in the next video.